right, we are continuing on uh, to our next page of uh, this is the last page of art uh, for Elemental Key, and it's just a spot. It's just a little corner spot piece, um, and then after that, uh, I need to build the mana playmat for the uh, um, uh, Elemental Key. Uh, actually, using Elemental Key tokens uh, when you're playing a monk. So, give me a hot second to um, to punch my signal here, and. Um, Choo, 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 am I, yep, I'm making lots of inane noises, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I just, I'm just punching my signal here, so give me a hot second while I just press paste a whole bunch of times, <laughs> real quick here, and, yeah, we'll let that go, here and there and uh, paste blurp and paste and then copy enter button press copy enter button press paste enter button press paste enter button press paste enter and I am done. So, okay, great. So we're getting back into it. Um, let's see what we can see. Page here. Okay, great. So, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm blocking it. Um, let's see. What we are going to focus on is... Um, uh, let's see. You have perfect recovery, which is at the beginning of your turn. Uh, you can choose to regain all spent key. Uh, you can use this feature once, regain it when you finish a long rest. And at this point, you have 20 key. So that's pretty powerful. Um, certainly better than the four key that you get at the beginning of turn if you don't have any, which is ridiculous for a 20th level character. That uh, that's only that's only a two first level spells according to the DMG or. Uh, a flurry of blows and a second level spell. And considering this is the four elemental monk, and what they should be doing is throwing spells around, they don't have a mana bat. They don't have enough of a mana battery to do it. So there needs to be more mana in general. So um, what we're going to do instead, though, that's not our focus. Uh, what we're actually focusing on here is empty form, which replaces empty body from the player's handbook. This doesn't really change. You can uh, you can use a bonus action to tap or lock for key. To become invisible uh, while sustaining this effect, uh, you also have resistance to all types of damage except force. Um, additionally, you can cast the Astral Projection spell as a ritual uh, without burning any key or needing material components. That's that's slightly different um, in that it doesn't require you spending any key to do it, but it is a ritual. It's all right, and they can do it as an action. I believe they can do it as an action. Uh, for eight key, and I don't know any circumstances in the game where you don't have at least an hour to go on an extra planar journey through the astral to find your way to another plane. It's already a, a long distance. It's a it's a it's a it's a overland astral projection is an overland travel activity that doesn't require an action to perform starting your quest. Uh, you can just as easily just take an hour and make it a ritual so that everyone you have on board has a chance to, you know, get coffee and stuff like that before they go. There is no chase scenes that happen when you ask for project because you have no idea who you where you're going to be when you project you're just into the astral so that's what i'm going to pick but this is what i'm going to pick um i'm going to take a little minute here to do some spot art down here in the corner i would just uh, right now i'm just ruminating as uh, i don't know if that's the right word i'm just going to mince some um uh i'm just going to mince some line art i've got an idea about like uh like a um like a temple sort of thing that hangs in the astral. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how this is going to shape out, but this is the idea that I have. So I'm just going to go with this and see where it leads. And if it's stupid, then I'll just start over.
There, that feels good. So we're going to duplicate that layer, and then we're going to free transform, and then flip horizontal. Boom, boom, boom. That duplicative effect that I'm doing there is uh, really useful for helping create silhouettes and form language on what I'm trying to do. Cool. <clears throat> we're gonna merge that down and then we're going to delete here and duplicate and then free transform here flip horizontal yeah that feels right I'm going to then merge down Nice, thank you, bot. I, I I have no idea what that is, but um, if I were to assume you were a future super fan asking me a question for five dollars, what would that question be? Hmm, what would they possibly be asking me? Uh, maybe it's going to be something like, um, <clears throat> um, Phil, is this, uh, is this stuff going to be stock art? Um, theoretically, yes. Uh, my, my, my biggest challenge with stock art is the time it takes to put it into packaging and publish it on DMs Guild and DTRPG and where, whatever other platform I want. So I've got a, a decent catalog of interior art I've built for DMs Guild products uh, over the past two years that uh, most of it is still camera ready. That is a production level that I, I would feel proud about selling. <clears throat> the only sadness is that it takes time out of me making books to make art packages. And um, honestly, it's it's this has not been... I, I'm I'm more in this for the, um, the I mean to be perfectly honest I'm more into this for the passion of creating the products like I am so steeped in trying to get color mana and elemental key ideas out the door that I'm not really concerned about the art the the, the profit that I can make from the art and I know that I know there's opportunities for me to actually. Um, I know I could be making more money every month if I if I was diligent about posting the art uh, for you know the stock art dirt stock art. What I'm trying to say, uh, but it's it's not it's not a priority, and I'm wondering if at some point I'm going to calm down <laughs> about how much how much bookage that I'm I'm building here. And uh, we'll start treating it more like a business and then start converting all these assets into stock art. But I honestly don't know when that's going to be. Because I got like another, I have four more projects already stacked up that I just absolutely want to do. 
and, and none of them is build art packages to sell online. So I think at some point I will get to that point where I really want to get serious about this being a business. But honestly, my, my day job has been a blessing and, uh, and it's only getting more and more fun to do. And, um, <clears throat> and there's still so much, so much um, book that I want to get built. I've got, I've got, God, I've got like maybe, let's see, it looks like the, uh, looks like the Ebron adventure that I'm writing with Andy is probably going to end up clipping in like around 80 pages. And, um, I mean, if it's less great, but right now it's parsing out around 80 pages and, um, the Marshall mana, uh, the Marshall powers book that I'm building um, that is probably going to be 60 pages. Uh, the Evron Random Adventure uh, Toolkit, that is probably going to be 80 pages. So I've got, I've got, boy, I got a lot, I got a lot of book production to do. <laughs> it's gonna be a while before I, I'm, and that's and that's not even talking about like um, like spellpoint artificers, um, the the revised spellpoint sorcerer that I've got, um, or or any or any subclass design books that I'm considering. So I've got a, a ton on my plate. And um, and command command is going to be I can't believe I forgot about command. Command is going to end up being um, probably close to a hundred pages as well. So there's command a hundred pages, the adventure seventy pages, the toolkit eighty pages. That's two hundred and fifty pages already. Um, so, yeesh. Yeah, when I, when I finish all that, maybe I'll start building in a routine of me, um, boxing up and, and posting all, all these illustrations for stock art. Having said that, if anyone wants to use any of the illustrations that they see in any of the books that I publish, you are certainly welcome to ping me, and, um, I can certainly send you a, a, a tip or a PNG or a JPEG of any of the images that I'm doing for a, a fair price. And uh, I can just negotiate it on the fly. I'm also looking to do a uh, Patreon, uh, building a, a once, I mean, once I get serious, once, see the problem is, is once I get serious about building stock art, I'm going to want to launch a Patreon, which is going to really commit me to uh, a, a cadence of doing, uh, of producing art every month, regardless if it's part of a book or not. So that I'm always feeding something to the Patreon. And I also want to use the Patreon do subclass design work like uh, like color man like converting color cards uh, uh mtg cards into character or or just monster stuff in general um these are these are the paths that i want to choose to go on and uh there's going to be a, a pretty substantial commitment to time so i really need to get all these books out the door for me to have that time to commit if that makes sense so I'm really kind of excited about that, but it's it, there's it's it's a it's a hell of ramp up, and um, we're seeing that we're seeing that happening now. So that is certainly where I'm hoping I'll, I'll end up at. Let me get rid of this. Borrow from Theros. 
the Odyssey Anthology, I had an opportunity to do some really fun, um, um, God, why am I blanking on that? It's, um, not missed. Why am I, why am I blanking on what the astral space in myth and in, in Theros is? Uh, anyway, um, I did a lot of, I, I, I did, um, some of the, um, environment art for the Odyssey Anthology that's on DMs Guild, and, uh, so I had a chance to, uh, play and have fun with, um, that is just killing me, I cannot think of the name of, uh, of what that is for the life of me, um. <clears throat> what is that called? Nyx, God, thank you, N NYX, Nyx, for the life of me, I could not remember that, um, yeah, Nyx is like this, um, is, is this shadowy, uh, star-like, it's like the stars in, in, in Theros is, is not actual space, it's the stuff called Nyx, and anything that's supernatural or god-born, it's shadows, isn't just dark shadow, it's a starscape. That you can like see the universe in, in their shadow. It's super flavor cool, uh, and they call it Nix. So <clears throat> Nix is kind of my default astral space whenever I'm doing illustrations like this. Not that I do a ton of illustrations like this, but I had an opportunity to do some in the Odyssey anthology, and that was a hoot. Yeah. Now nah, just let taper off. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to build it at this size and then um, probably scale it down. I'll either crop or scale it down, but I wanted to make sure that I had decent representation here. So, like, you know, if it is going to be stock art, then it's it's super user-friendly. Right now, I'm just fading this, this background into it, and it's this goldish silvery effect. What is it? Seven o'clock? Uh -huh. Yeah, Nix doesn't take that long. We'll we'll see we'll see how this shakes out. God, I am so excited. The uh, the mana playmat honestly is going to be the biggest bear that I have to wrestle with, and um, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of production time tomorrow available. I'm not sure how much of it I'm going to stream. <clears throat> I'm not good. I'm not good at making playmats yet, and a lot of it I build. Uh, last time I built a lot of it in Word, but I think I'm going to make something a little bit more hand drawn this time. Like I just used a bunch of tools, uh, like shapes and objects, and just basically graphic arted them into position. But I, I think for for this book, I want to do a hand, uh, uh, more of a, a custom drawn. But uh, I'm I'm still figuring out. 
I think the font. I don't, I don't know what font I want to use for the different labels and stuff. That's something I'm still ruminating on. So we'll see. That's a good background. So we're going to go up here. <clears throat> Hey man, how you doing? Your timing is exquisite. I'm I'm working on uh, um, this is the uh, here I'll I'll show that again uh, the elemental keybook that I'm working on empty form. It's uh, I I converted their their elemental uh, their empty body into empty form, which is instead of spinning key for astral projection, it's just a ritual instead. So you don't have to actually budget anything for it. You can't do it in a round. You can, it, it, it's not an action to do it, but I don't know anyone that's ever needed to go to the after praying like right now. They've always had an extra 10 minutes. They could wait for the hour-long casting of the spell under normal circumstances. So I made it free uh, to cast uh, just uh, as a ritual instead. So that means I get to make a Nyx painting. So that's kind of what I'm building here, like, a, like a, the monk aesthetic of a shrine. And then have Nyx beyond it. So that's what I'm going to be working on here. And uh, maybe I'll have it done in an hour. Probably. Nyx doesn't take that long. But man, I am loving YouTube, dude. I am absolutely loving YouTube. It is... Um, it, it, it Twitch throws your stuff away. They, they won't keep it for more than like two weeks or whatever, I guess. If I got large enough, it might stay around longer. But I was just... I. I didn't realize how much of my work was going to end up just getting scrapped. So it, a lot of my work got scrapped. And so I'm like, well, crap. Um, I don't have it to upload. So I wanted to not worry about that in the future. And the added production time just absolutely kills me. So just working directly on YouTube and just having it auto-load into my page. And I can just click into a, 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 um, a playlist is just... The, the the saving the time saving alone made it worth converting over and uh, and I'm loving it absolute fun yeah hey man how you doing what do you got going on what, what projects are you working on right now you know you into anything <clears throat> All right, so yeah, this is a new project, so, um, uh, oh yeah, right on, man. I want to get into lessons. Um, the, all the lessons cards in the, uh, in the card set are, are colorless mana, uh, but I think it'd be anywhere from like two to five mana to cast, but they, but they are zero color, which I think is really interesting how thematically Strixhaven is like you're a student, and the lessons are, are spells that um, any school should be able to use, but all the schools in, in the MTG cards, of course, have a color identity. So, like, um, Wither Blooms, Black, Green wouldn't be able to use any of Lorehold's white, red spells, but the lessons are colorless. So, it's like you learn them, and then you take them from being colorless, man, and then you convert, you drop them into your own school's color palette. That's kind of like the narrative that I feel off of that. So that, that makes me feel like there's something I can do with the lessons cards, like environmental sciences and stuff like that, and, and convert those into some sort of mana manipulation that would reflect um, a student learning things. But it's, it's, it's ruminating. It's not my type of priority. It's something I'm thinking about. 
Yeah, I want to. I, I want to see good rules for Mage Tower too. Um, you keep me updated about that because, I, well, there's probably like seven people on the guild that are already considering Mage Tower projects. So there might actually be some really fun opportunities for us to collaborate. Um, I'm kind of open to that. But um, I, it certainly it certainly feels lackluster that it would just be. Um, a few ability checks. I need more coffee. I'm going to step off screen for a second, but I'm going to keep talking with you, dude. Um, I, I think, I don't know. I, I kind of like the idea of, of, of Mage Tower being like a limited PvP sort of thing. Since it's just a game anyway, it's a safe place for characters to actually compete against each other without it having to be drawing swords and becoming this like this lethal affair. So I'm I'm still I'm still considering that, but I like the idea of there being a set, like like actual rules to conduct, um, like a, like an off combat sort of mini game option. I also like spell. I also like the idea of the spell duels in uh, in the library. Those are also really not fleshed out at all. And anyone else that that hangs out on my stream pretty regularly hears me ranting about how much I feel that Silvery Barbs was supposed to be a dueling spell, and then they scrapped the dueling system, so they just exported Silvery Barbs uh, into a into a cla into a class feature, and then into a spell. I don't know. Been a while, huh? You feeling the itch? My production time for a book is like a couple of months a piece. It's 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 uh I want I want to start getting into smaller things like subclasses and stuff like that, but I don't know how productive those are actually are on the guild. Unless it's like a themed book of subclasses. But and then like the the Pax and Patrons book that I had done for Ravnica Otherworldly Patrons, um, molasses man, that thing moves like molasses. Because not only do you have to be interested in Ravnica, you have to be interested in being a warlock in Ravnica, and then you have to be interested in being an alternate type of warlock other than what's all, that's you know not already hexblade. <laughs> so it's it's uh it's kind of a crapshoot on the DMs Guild about subclasses in general i think that's that feels more like patreon design space where folks that grok what you do are, are kind of into it and want to be part of the process which is very fun i've done some design jams on on discord like uh specifically on the indestructible boys um discord server and uh just like someone will come with a random idea and then you spitball with people and then like an hour later you've got a subclass you know it's um much faster production time when people are just think tanking stuff, but it's also not specifically yours. But that becomes something that's like, hey, we all worked on this together. Everyone can post it on their own Patreon. That's the kind of think space that I think I want to get into. I'm down with done projects. Okay, that radiance feels, I think. I want to diffuse that a little bit. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Yeah. Just like that. Icked. Not too much, not too little. There. <clears throat> so for, for folks that don't know me, um, I don't see color. So the way that I... Um, the way that I build projects is I'll find something like this is my go-to for Nyx because it's got a lot of fun color references going on like purples and reds and stuff like that. And uh, I'll just use my color picking tool and you can, you can see um, up here in the corner that the color picker tool will just grab the color that I need. And as long as the resource that I'm using is something I can trust, then I'm, I'm safe. I'm safe to play with it. So that's, and uh, you know, for the audience that's going to check this out, I'm going to have this. Uh, I'm going to have this playlist up uh, in the description page of um, of this product once I actually put it on DMs Guild probably next week, so like folks can come through and, and check out all the artwork production just to kind of get involved and hear my thoughts about stuff as I go. Hey, Rick, hey, uh, Rich man, how you doing? I am having a fantastic day, dude. We're doing some uh, we're doing some astral uh, astral projection like monks get astral projection at 18th level so I'm doing 
I'm taking Astral Projection. I'm making it Nyx instead of Astral Space. I love Nyx. It is so cool. There are so many things I have in plan for Nyx once um, once the the Planescape Spell Jammer whatever book eventually happens. I um I have I have thoughts and plans in this space that I wanna I wanna see play out. So uh, I'm I'm getting my Nyx on right now. Is that, hey Matt? Is there any of the projects that you're working on? Anything that you can spoil for us, or uh, or is it all under wraps right now? And I need to be patient with the rest of the multiverse. What you got going on, Rich? Great thing about Nyx is it's just basically painting clouds. And I and, and anyone that used to catch my Bob Ross streams uh, knows I love painting clouds. I want to get into more. I want to get involved in more projects where I'm just doing art for like a percentage cut or whatever. And like PMing projects where I'm just doing the artwork and hiring a crew to, to write the product so that I get to spend all the time doing artwork like this and, and promoting it and then bringing on, on the writers and having them talk about whatever their piece was. So I'm not, I'm not sure what that, that timeline is going to be, but I think that'd be really fun. Nice. I don't know. Rich, what's your production timeline like? Like, uh, like how long, how long is your piece and plug your, uh, uh, obviously, Links and stuff are, are bad in chat, but um, um, mention your channel and uh, uh, what's the normal length of time for your videos and what's your uh, edit production timeline? <clears throat> Man, I got a Hagen Hagen, which means I need more coffee. <sighs> no kidding! Oh, that's really cool, Matt. I dig that. I think that's got great flavor. I like the um, I like the the the, nar the, the snarls, the the snarl lands. Uh, in MTG and uh, how they're like they're they're they they twist the two lands together into these knots. <clears throat> Past I would take two hours to write and record, and then seven or eight hours to edit a video. If it's just stream highlights, it takes one to two hours. Ah, eh, right on. I am just starting to get into editing the like clipping and like I see Indestructor Boy doing a lot of um, uh, a lot of long long form live streams and then clipping pieces out of it and he's very nonchalant about it and uh, I, I want to have that same casual feel that I can get I, but I think he's I think he's um, and I think streamers in general get good at this and I'm hoping I do too is like to, to be able to frame thoughts like to stay on course with a single idea so that it can be clipped from a longer stream so I can get on a tear like I like I was talking about the differences of silvery barbs as as spell points versus spell slots and but I also ended up kind of rambling into a number of other topics during the course of that so like I'm going to probably redo that as a single clip just talking about the differences of of 
spell access when you're using a spell point pool versus spell slots because a lot of people don't use spell slots at all and it seems like it's useful content to talk about but it, the the scaling like uh, the scope the word is scope keeping the scope contained on a live stream so that you don't end up just rambling all over the place so that it, it's not as useful i think that's i think that's a skill like that you have to like straight up acquire No kidding. Every time a bot posts on my channel, one of those .info or .tech feeds, I pretend it's somebody just, that just gave me five bucks to ask a question, and I, I think about it for a second what, what that question might have been relevant to whatever it is I'm working on, and then I ask myself a question and then answer. <laughs> it's so silly, but uh, I guess it's good practice. So... I mean, I myself, I never have a shortage of topics to talk about. I think it's more of just an issue of it being mental fatigue versus having to concentrate on whatever content I'm producing right now. And I'm using uh, I'm using uh, Epidemic for for stock music right now, just to run in the background so I don't get flagged. But I'm also noticing one of my biggest problems with stream is uh, is how much I miss listening to like Led Zeppelin or Sepultura or uh, uh, various soundtracks that are licensed that that flag my account. I mean, I don't care if I get demonetized so much as I don't ever want to have the personal policy of the flagger changed. And having my stuff like get me strikes because I don't want to spend time building up a channel that that people want to look at if it's just going to get struck down. That's just that's just enraging. <laughs> so I find myself putting on uh, earphones and listening to my own music on my phone while I'm just playing stock music in the background here. And I I honestly don't know if just silence and, and listening to my pencil scratches is better than just generic music or not. These are these are my contemplations as a streamer. I love I love the idea of blending um, the Feywild or uh, or the uh, Domains of Dread in with uh, different campaign spaces. Like uh, like in Eberron, for example, I've been geeking out on Eberron a lot lately in my own campaign. Like having Witchlight bleed into um, like the uh, like having uh, the um, Feywild bleed into the Eldine Reaches and uh, connecting different points in Zendika uh, in Zendrick. Like the Traveler is a thing in Zendrick where you could you could start going for a stroll and you end up on another part of the continent. And to me that to me that just says yeah there's there's like crazy witch light energy um, in. Um, in Zendrick, and then like in the Shadow Marches and in Demon Wastes, that feels to me like that's that's where the Domains of Dread really touch point um, in Ebron. That and uh, and the Morning, of course. I think there should be. I think there's natural paths that lead through the Morning into um, into the Domains of Dread as well, which is I think something that is so. In, uh, that that sounds like something that's worth development. Like, uh, like, uh, the law, like, like, uh, here's, here's something that could be exploitable by anybody that listens to it. Like, Sire wasn't destroyed, it was pulled into Ravenloft. So, it, uh, the morning was the act of, um, of the, uh, of, of the Grey Mists pulling the entire nation into Ravenloft. So, it still exists, it's just trapped in the, uh, in those mists. <clears throat> oh that's so kind i'm really that matt i again i really appreciate you uh providing me image samples of the uh of the of the rakdos pe uh peruns uh, when i was working on that pax and patrons cover that was uh, seriously. That was a lifesaver, man. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad my babbling and content is uh, something that you get return of investment from.
Yeah, I work from I work from home now. So um, like it's uh, it's seven thirty now, and my shift starts at eight. It's like you know eight till five, and um, I can now I can just wake up a little earlier, get my morning jam on, and uh, once um, once I hit once I hit close to like another twenty minutes, I'm gonna have to break stream and uh, refresh my coffee. And then there we go. I needed to get some purples in here. Thank you. And uh, and then I could just. Um, log out log on and just get on with my my day but i've had i can go my whole day now and and not be pining away for when do i get to get home when do i when do i get to get back to to doing the book work that i want to do it's like i get to start my day with the book and i can grind the guardrail up to up to the last minutes and and uh, and and then just dive into the job and i'm finding it's easier for me to remain productive at work i'm not Looking out the window to, to see when I get to go play, uh, I get to prioritize my tasks and knock them down. And if I want to spend time on lunch, like um, I have a D and D game that I, I run with coworkers, and so we just log on to Zoom <laughs> and we play D and D for an hour at lunch. And uh, God, we've just, this is the fourth year of us doing that. We were playing in person uh, in the office, and then when, once they shut the office down because of the pandemic, we just jumped on to onto zoom and started doing that and um and, and all, all all of us are are pretty much like there's four of us i got three players that have stuck with me for four years doing this and i think three of them are permanently work from home and uh one of them is probably going to end up having to go back into office eventually but uh, but there's it's all Zoom, so I mean, he can just jump on his phone and Zoom with us from his desk if he wanted to. But I'm um, really excited, super fun. I'm I'm really excited and about where my future specifically is heading. I'm going to here and. No, this is not a thing. No, I'm, gonna get, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be bold, and I'm going to look at this as duplicate the layer, hide, merge, and then let's see what happens if I put a blur onto it. Yep, that feels pretty good. So we'll do that. Is that the morning was caused by Sire trying to reach Plane of Death? Nice. That's very nice. And then being right next to Karnath, that makes sense. That's super cool, dude. That's great. I'm, I'm glad. I mean, it's just so intuitive to do that uh, about having Sire pulled into uh, in, into Ravenloft. That just oh, the flavor is so deep. Oh, that's so super cool, Matt. I love that. That's that is that is alone is something that's worth putting on the guild. IMO. That's just ridiculous. If uh, if you if you pull the trigger on that as like a five piece tear out or something, um, just to, just to post on the guild, I would be happy to spend some morning time putting some artwork to that. If uh, if you head in that direction at some point, just keep me updated. The flavor in that is just ridiculous. Oh, no kidding. String beats. Okay, hold on. I'm going to open my... Notes, call utility, review, future plans. I'm pretty happy with the mix that Epidemic has, but I also recognize that there's limits on catalogs and that I'll eventually get tired of the music that I put in and I have to build new lists and stuff. And 
so far I'm not I'm not hating it, but um, I I recognize that there are limits. Let's let's do this. Where are we at? We're at 7.30 now? Yeah, we're doing okay. Let's blend this in. I do like this setup that that um, when I when I use like obviously epidemic is the only reference I have yet. It's the first one I've used, but I, I like that the the policy is that as long as the timestamp of um, of your of your uploads are within the time that you've paid um, for their services, they'll never flag you. Like it's like you know you made you you paid us while you made this. So you're good to go. I love that. I think that's I think that's really smart design. That's good uh, business model. That's good business model. It's like I can I can like um, I can play Epidemic for a while and then bail on it and switch to another stream channel and uh, and use that for a while and then I can bounce back and forth between different things and as long as I'm not. As long as the, all the uploads stay within license, then I don't have to worry about it. I imagine all of these streaming services are similar because what a what a logistic nightmare of coordinating uh, the presence of your music and different stuff. It's obnoxious. That's a good color. try try this brush for a while yeah no I'm not hating that that is not a cloud brush No kidding. Well, that is huge heads up. Thanks, man. I will therefore check that out sooner than later. Feel you, man. Sometimes I feel lucky that um, I I started off as an artist and didn't discover design until I got to a point where I could I could be my own artist. <laughs> that's that's um, I lament the the progress that so many people have had on on building streams or more building content or building an audience like that. And I don't know. I think I think I just need to stay in the game longer to really appreciate where I get to start at. We're getting to the point where I'm happy with the cloud array and we're going to just start dropping stars in. And once we do that, this piece will be done. So I mean, this is, this, it's just spot art, super easy, barely an inconvenience.
Yeah, I don't know how valuable art really is as a stream. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do it because I, I, I want to be able to try to connect with anyone out there that's that that doesn't see color but wants to get into art to, just to be able to put out the content so they can see that they can do it um but i don't know i don't know i don't know man this is going to be this is going to be the first set of of art streams i've done that i've put onto a product page for dm skills as like you know watch the process check it out um i don't know if that actually has any value um i don't know I like the I like the idea of uh, of putting stock art up on DMs Guild or whatever, and or like DTRPG is probably the better place to do it. But to put up stock art and then to have a similar like production stream of like here's the stock art you're purchasing, here is me making that art. Um, I think that's more of a Patreon thing than than anything else. Like if I if I eventually get my shit together and put a Patreon channel together, I I, I, I there might be value. And doing this kind of stuff, I don't know. It's pretty evident to me that I'm never going to stop painting, and I'm also probably going to keep producing RPG content. So I, I think the two things just kind of go together. I don't know. I think there's I think there's an in place here for me, but I'm so new to it that I don't want to beat myself up for not getting it yet. I just want to get into into content. I like how Wizards of the Coast is kind of is kind of like planting a flag in Five E. It's a it's a great chassis. Um, I don't know, I don't know what they're going to do when when and it's already getting close to expiration. Like hope for a new edition to get launched uh, according to their normal time framing, but I don't know if they're actually going to do that this time around because they're still building steam with with Five E, like changing the entire chassis. I, I I don't I don't know what value that would actually have to the fan base that they built. The problem with uh, the problem with additions in general is that they get so bloated with uh, with with like technical crunch that they paint themselves into a corner. Um, and it's weird because the DMs Guild opening that up like creates this this space where you've got tens of thousands of people doing that crunch for you. And um, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what Wizards Endgame here is like. What their sustainable model really is? They they outsource their D and D Beyond, which they need to take in house. They're not really integrating MTG into their five E mechanics yet as its own standalone. They're experimenting with Power Rangers. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what their end game is. <laughs> yeah, Rich, I don't know. It's two separate streams. I don't know if they cross over properly. I know what I want to get into is like all the books that I produce. Yeah, I'm really excited about that, Matt. Like like having having at least two years of, of solid con my stuff is my stuff is so derivative and variance already I don't think it's as long as they keep 5e uh, open on the guild I don't think my stuff is ever going to go bad um, I'm kind of thrilled about that I'm going to actually leave that plot there I kind of like that and as far as I'm going to merge all that down and as far as uh, Where I want to get to is the point where I've got like I like I build these flagship books that like do that do huge system overhauls that are uh, have huge compatibility options for different campaigns and different aesthetics. Uh, it, there's just a lot of it, so I think once I actually get all of that content hammered out over the next two years. Um, what I will be able to do is just start grabbing ideas and then applying the mechanics that I've built and then basically like live streaming class designs or um, like uh, like I've been accumulating ideas about um, like a, an like a competitive archaeology campaign based off of Lorehold where Lorehold is like white red but there's different philosophies of color that could be applied to the pursuit of knowledge like white black. Uh, versus uh, white green versus white blue 
Um, you can just take the different colors, and because I love colors so much, um, the color philosophies that you can just take like any idea and you can spill stuff out of it. So I, I like the idea of like doing like campaign build ideas on stream and subclass build ideas, and then like taking MTG character art, like like card art, and building characters out of them. And that's that all kind of that's all kind of Patreon space, and I think Patreon might be a better. Might might be a, a better uh, monetization vehicle for YouTube content like this than um, than book like like them making books. <laughs> the the books kind of anchor the ideas, so they kind of go hand in hand. But I can't put stuff on Patreon and then put it into uh, a book if it's going to be Wizards content because you know IP restrictions. Which has been fine so far, like in, in the in the broad sense of looking at like a like how do I manipulate general IP space? But when I start, like pa the the book Packs and Patrons really proved to me that you can't hyper focus on a specific idea and expect it to monetize as a book, but it can monetize as a thought process and as a stream jam. So that that might be in, it might end up being where I go. And of course, commissions. I like. I like doing commissions on stream because then the, the commissioner can come on and, and can banter with me about, you know, what they like about what's being done and where they want to see things change and blah, blah, blah. That's been a real joy. I've done it. This, the, this is the, the, in the evenings, this is the second commission jam that I've done online where, where the, the, uh, the commissioner will come in and, and have comments about what they're looking at. And that's super fun. soften this up a little bit and then I think I'm going to get Nixie. Start dropping in some stars. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Why don't I think about that? Duplicate this, and then hide that, and then go back into here, and then go into filter, and then go to blur, and then go to Gaussian blur, and then up the blur. There. Then take this and then drop the opacity on it a bit. There, that feels good. And then we can merge that down. Ah, no, I'm feeling I want more stripes. I thought I was gonna get into I thought I was gonna get into star space, but I think I wanna. I want to do some fat ribbons. Yeah, the, yeah, those terms and conditions. I've seen, I've seen a number of uh, YouTube streamers uh, get their stuff pulled down because there'll be something they'll talk about on their YouTube stream. They'll offer it on their, uh, they'll offer it on their Patreon, and then they'll take it from Patreon and they'll publish it as is. Uh, onto the DMs Guild, and then it gets pulled down off the DMs Guild. <laughs> it's, I've seen that a number of times happen. It's funny. It's not funny, haha. -ha. It's funny. I got to figure it out. Uh, I know. I know that you can like do. I, I know that you can invite Patreons in to help you design this stuff. It's the actual. It's the actual publication, the production of the final text, like ideation, uh, in half in half baked thoughts, like not using. Um, proper you can't you, uh, you, you can't you can't uh, copyright mechanics you can only copyright text so if you designed if you have like a if you have like a like a, a shorthand scribble 
that you were to use on Patreon that isn't that doesn't look anything like Wizards of the Coast wording, but it's the same idea, like like plus two PB and uh, and then like and symbol whiz equals um, gain bonus to armor class. Like that's not that's not something that that's 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 a half baked thought. They can't flag you for uh, posting a notepad with some like like for example. Let's um, let's let's be really case in point here. Um, what's a good example? Where is that? Here's a yeah my new like the like the new sorcerer stuff. Where, where can I put this? Here's a, here's the new sorcerer stuff that I'm working on, and and you can see. Uh, like I can, I can have like a, a quick scribble here of game man, all mana on short, on long rest. Regain all mana when you finish a short rest. Uh, you can do this once per long rest. You can regain all sorc points on a long rest, and then have a breakdown of how much mana you have, and then how many sorcery points. I can post that on my Patreon page, and people can buy into the the ideas that I have. But that is not a DM's Guild product. I can. I would then have to go through, and I'd have to code these different bullet points into WOTC language, and then drop it into formatting, and then publish that on DM Skilled. And that final publication is now locked inside of DM Skilled. But that spitballing, that's mine. You can't, you can't copyright my spitballs because I didn't publish it on your page, and it's not copyright infringement because I am in no way using language. I am just throwing up ideas. So it's not a final product. It's not full sentences even. I'm not even using punctuation. There is no tie over there. But it's also not a complete product. So it's not like I can go and take down a DTRPG and publish it because it looks like crap. But it's just ideation. So I, th- I, think that's where, I think that's where the space is actually at. You don't bring Patreons. I don't think Patreons jump on board so they can get the final product. I think they jump on board so they can be part of the creation process. Like that's what I love about the Discord channels that I'm locked in with, is that I get to I, I get to spitball ideas and be part of this creative process with people, and we we get to come up with stuff. But like the stuff that we come up with there, it's not finished. It's just spit it's just spitballs and and bullet points and you know going through and then building it out into final WOTC Chicago style code. That's when it gets locked down. So that's um. I don't know. That's I think that's I think that's where I'm evolving into, and um, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. So anyway, this is this is me in hardcore rambling. Thanks for taking me here. Once my brain turns off, the artwork turns on. Uh, sure, I'll take a look. I don't know how much of a deep dive I'm going to get. I mean, I can I can look at stuff and spitball it with you, but it's and yeah, I'm on tape. It's just my name, Phil Kearney. It's I'm the same thing everywhere. So you'll find me there. I don't. Yeah, I don't mind looking at stuff. I don't know how much input I'll have. Yeah, like if you have like oh that looks great, I like that. If you have like mostly complete thoughts on on, on stuff, um, posting it onto onto Terran's um, um, oh god, what is it? What is that Discord? Hold on, I'm gonna jump in there real quick. Just take a look at Terran's stuff here behind my screen. Uh, what channel is it? It's his. Um, oh yeah, it's critique my work. Um, a lot of stuff gets posted on critique my on his critique my work sub channel, and uh, and people mince over stuff. But um, you are certainly welcome to ping me, um, you know, fr and stuff like that uh, on Discord, and I'll be I'll be happy to I'll be happy to sharpen knives with you, man. Okay, I am 
Super close. I keep saying I'm going to get it. Oh my god, 750. All right, so no scars, no starscape. I'm going to uh, I'm going to bite the bullet and hold off on finishing this piece um, tomorrow because I am I'm just about doing color ribbons, and I'm liking I'm liking the mix of cloud and chunk. So this is I'm really happy with this. But um, it's getting it's getting to the point where it's it's worked enough that I can start dropping in stars. And once the stars are dropped in, then the piece is pretty much going to be done. This will be the last piece of artwork that goes into this book. Um, and then I have the uh, the key play mat to build out on the next page. And then from there, it's just um, it's just um, layout production. The the page obviously, obviously the page is already laid out, and then I drop them in the Photoshop, and then I just paint on the page, and then I upload that as a background that I import back into Word. And then publish uh, as a PDF through Word, uh, which is an easy prog, which is an easy project. But I still need to do uh, like page numbering. Like I do, I, I do custom page numbering, and um, I, I got all uh, all the links and stuff to build. But almost all of the artwork and the pages are already dropped into Word. So I'm just waiting for this one to get finished up. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Still got a few minutes though, so I can I can still futz around my page a little bit before I gotta bounce. <clears throat> but yeah, I I am enjoying the process too much. It took a little bit longer than I wanted, which is almost always the case, but that's art. Yeah, right on man. Thanks, Rich. I really appreciate you being there. Um, it's, it's cool hearing your thoughts and yeah definitely man I'll be happy to look at it sounds awesome I'm pretty pleased with this. No, I want to leave that be. I don't want to break that silhouette. Duplicate and merge and then image adjustments, brightness contrast.
Okay, cool. This is where we're going to be for the day. Um, this is obviously a, a lot more landscape in general than, uh, than what the, the text space is going to uh, uh, require. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to actually take the text. I don't know. Maybe there's an idea there. Yeah, I'd have to change the text color, uh, which I'm not going to do. I like this. I like this faded gray for my text color in general, but uh, ob obviously this, this cloud space is a lot more than what the text is going to offer, so I'll end up blocking out most of that. But some of it can, some of it can bleed through. Uh, but then I'll, I'll drop in all the, all the stars and stuff. And Pretty, pretty cool. Um, I could potentially... Here... I could reduce it. I could potentially reduce it down like that, so you can see more of it. So I have less to block off. But I'm starting with this larger space here because that makes it more useful. Anyway, I am out of time. It is 7:59, so I'm going to kick here. I'm going to drop in my day job, and uh, I will probably be around late night working on character art commissions again. So thanks for showing up. It was killer talking to you, Rich and, and Matt. Thanks for keeping me company. I really appreciate it. And um, The cruel headmaster of Villainous Mage School who has to eat the failing students. Oh my god, that's awesome! That would. <laughs> that's so cool. I love that. Oh my god. Matt, I want to hear more about this, man. I, I will catch up with you later, dude. And uh, I am. I got a cut, so.